Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about how to determine if a given alkene is going to be an E or a Z isomer and we'll briefly talk about the cis and trans as well. If I'm focusing on this first structure and the second structure that I have drawn and if I want to figure out what the relation is going to be between those two, around the double bond you can clearly see I have the same types of groups. I got this uh, uh, hydrogen there and another hydrogen there. So I can clearly see those small groups are opposite to one another. And then I got the other big groups. They are the methyl groups and they are opposite to one another. And those groups I'm comparing, they're actually the same. So I got two methyls and I got two hydrogens that I'm looking at. And when I'm looking at this second structure, I'm looking into the same story. We got around the double bond, we got two hydrogens and two methyls. Now the difference between those two in the second structure, your methyl groups are on the same side and your hydrogens are on the same side. But in the first structure, you, they were on the opposite sides. So another way of saying your methyl group right there and the methyl group right there, they were kind of anti to one another or they are opposite to one another. So when you have those similar groups and you're comparing the similar groups in around the double bond, this first one having those same groups or similar groups opposite to one another we call that trans but then in second case where your same groups are on the same side uh, uh, your hydrogens or smaller groups are on the same side bigger groups on the other side would be making that a cis so this is a cis and trans uh, isomers they are the type of diastereomers, but around the double bond, those particular diastereomers don't have any chiral centers, however. But when I'm looking at uh, the other types of alkenes where you don't really have the same types of groups around the double bond that you're comparing, then you don't, you can't really call those cis and trans, but instead you call those E and Z. And um, people do use the cis and trans and E and Z kind of interchangeable from one another, but uh, the cis and trans in other cases could have a double meaning, uh, but uh, E and Z would be a better way of naming those. So E actually kind of similar to the trans where you're going to have the bigger groups on the opposite sides and then you're going to have Z is going to be kind of similar to the cis. Now how do you really figure that out when what, what makes a bigger group and what really makes a smaller group in case of E and Z? Well, we're going to be looking at uh, the atoms or the group of atoms based on the atomic numbers. So let's look at this first example here. So I'm focusing on the carbons that are connected to the double bond. So then I got this green carbon there and I'm going to have another carbon. Let's say I got a yellow carbon there. So this green carbon, uh, figure out what it's attached to it. I got a methyl group down there. So I'll just go and write that out. And then I got a hydrogen group up there. Now, who's going to get a priority between those two? Well, remember, we're going to be prioritizing those groups based on the atomic numbers. So when I go to the top to the hydrogen, remember, hydrogen is always going to be the lowest priority group because it's going to have, uh, it has the lowest atomic number in the periodic table. So hydrogen is going to be number two, and this CH3 carbon have an atomic number of six, so that's going to be your higher priority group, so that's going to be number one. Now I want to do the same thing on the yellow carbon. So when I'm looking at the yellow carbon, well I got a tie there, so there isn't a CH3 group there, and then there isn't a carbon there and a car uh, carbon there with two hydrogens attached, and then there isn't a CH3 group there. So you're kind of doing very similar what you do in case of RNS. So when you're trying to, if there is a tie, you move on to the uh, next atom until it breaks the tie. Now the top carbon has uh, two, three hydrogens attached and then the bottom carbon has only two hydrogen and then there is another carbon attached to it. So that actually takes the priority over the top part and as a result this bottom one is going to be one, number one and the top one is going to be number two. Now you can clearly see those your, uh, in terms of the priority, your same priority groups are on the on one side and uh, that would make it a Z.
don't go with uh, you know having the methyl right there and the methyl right there so that's one thing that's gonna come in students mind that okay well we got those two methyls they are opposite to one another that's gonna make it the trans but now that's not how you really do it anytime you have different substituents on those double bonded carbons you're gonna be uh, prioritizing those groups based on the atomic numbers and if your if the same priority groups are on the opposite side, then they are going to be trans. And if the same priority groups are on the same side or on one side, they are going to be making it Z or another way of saying kind of similar to cis. So this particular one is going to be Z. What about this next one? Well, it's probably going to be a good idea if you can pause the session and do these on your own and see if that matches with my answer here. So I'm looking at this green carbon and then I'm going to be looking at this yellow carbon. So let's look at, uh, let's give them those numbers. On the green carbon on the bottom, I got an oxygen attached. And on the top, I got a carbon there with two hydrogens. Obviously, your oxygens have a higher atomic number than the carbon. So this is going to be one, and that's going to be two. And now we're going to do the same thing on the second carbon. I got a methyl group on the bottom, and then I got a fluorine on the top. Well, clearly fluorine is going to have a higher atomic number than the carbon, so this is going to be 1 here, and this is going to be 2. Now you can clearly see your bigger priority groups, or higher priority groups, are opposite to one another. And since they are opposite to one another, they are going to be E-form, or transform. Okay. What about this next one here? Two carbon. We got two carbons right there, and uh, that's the yellow one. And then there's another one, and there's another double bond. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but let's focus on that particular double bond first. And when I'm looking at this yellow carbon, I got a carbon here, and that carbon is attached to other CH3 groups there and the hydrogen there. Then I got a carbon on the top there, and then we got two hydrogens, but then there is a nitrogen attached to it. So when you go away, there is a tie, like this carbon and this carbon is the same. So since there is a tie, you move on to the next atom until it breaks the tie. The next atom is indeed the nitrogen on the top of one, so that's going to be higher atomic number. So as a result, this one, the top one is going to be one, and the bottom group is going to be number two. So write that down here. What's going on with this second uh, carbon. Well, on the top one, you just got a uh, carbons there with single chain, uh, uh, no double bond. But on the bottom one, you have a double bond there. So remember, the double bond kind of gets the priority. So when you break up the double bond, so you have something like this. When you break it up, that just means you got an extra carbon there. So since you got an extra carbon there, this is going to be one and that's going to be two. Because you can also think of this way. Well, I got two hydrogens there on the first carbon, two hydrogens there on the first carbon. But when I'm looking at the second carbon, I got two hydrogens on the top. But on the bottom, I only have one hydrogen. So the other group is going to be the carbon that's going to be, uh, you're going to be retrieving after you take care of the double bond. So since you have the one on the bottom, two on the top. So now again, you can clearly see that your um, bigger group are opposite on, on the opposite side. So that makes it a E. Okay, and I did mention earlier that so what happens to the other double bond, like how do we take care of that? On this second double bond, on one side, you're going to have the same atoms or same group of atoms. So anytime you have same group of atoms on one of the carbons or same atoms even, um, then that's not going to be any form of sister trans. Uh, your sister trans is only going to be when the carbon is going to be having two different groups. If they have the same groups, then it's not going to be in the form of cis and trans. So this last double bond is not going to have any cis or trans in there, or E or Z even. What about this next one here? Uh, let's try to do that quickly. I got this green carbon, and I got this yellow carbon. Let's focus on the yellow carbon first. I got a methyl group on the top there. Got a hydrogen on the bottom, so clearly this is going to be one. That's going to be two. What's happening with this uh, green carbon? Well, I got a chlorine on the top and I got a carbon on the bottom, so clearly that's going to be one here. And that's going to be two. So now you can clearly see your higher higher priority groups are on the same side. 
So since your higher priority groups are on the same side, that's actually going to be a Z form. What about this next one here? Now on the next one, let's look at this green, uh, yellow carbon. We got fluorine on the top and oxygen on the bottom. So fluorine having a higher atomic number would be one. Oxygen having a lower atomic number would be two. And then when I'm looking at my second carbon there, your oxygen is going to be number one there. And then your carbon that's with the metal group is going to be number two. So your higher priority groups are on the same side now and your lower priority groups are on the same side, that's going to make that a cis as well or a Z form as well. So this is how you're going to be figuring out your Z and E isomers. They are kind of uh, similar, not exactly the same as cis and trans, but people do use uh, those as interchangeable. But like I said, your cis and trans is used mainly whenever you are dealing with same type of substituents on those double bonded carbons. But then if your the substituents on the double bond carbons are not the same, then the better way of referring those is going to be E or Z. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.